Have you been with a virgin? I have, yeah. How did you feel about the lack of inexperience? The lack of inexperience? Lack of experience. Uh, lack of experience. What? Um, I mean, I, I don't really care about a girl's sexual experience. Yeah, guys don't care about that. And, yeah. and here's the other thing when it comes to experience. Most women, whether they're friends or not, look to men to initiate and to lead. So if you're a guy who has even some level of experience and you know what you're doing, whether that's in a, within the context of a relationship or sexually in the bedroom, if you know what you're doing, you can have really good sex with a girl who's a virgin who's never had sex before. A woman need not have ever had sex for me to have good sex with her. However, for most women, they're going to look at a guy who's a virgin and be like, he's going to be bad and bad. I don't. Most women, now there are some women, women who are more dominant, for example, who are okay with leading, but most women are going to be turned off by a guy who they have to teach how to f them. Whereas most guys, it would actually be a turn on. It's, it's a turn on to like teach a girl. I also believe that women need the time to, how do I put this? Um, a man really seems to get into a, a woman fully releasing and women who lack experience don't really know how to do that quite yet. Well, I mean, I, I don't think you're wrong in so far as a woman who's inexperienced perhaps might be nervous or might be a bit in her head. However, I don't think that's a given. I don't think that's necessarily a given. And I would actually argue that that women who have less experience, who have had fewer sexual partners, are actually more capable of being fully immersed in the experience. Whereas women Wait, who have had a have hundred, source? hold on, women who have had a hundred previous partners, it's like, okay, here again, the it's gone. The the it, I'm not, it's not exciting anymore. Like, what's a high body count? I'm genuinely. I mean, curious. it varies based on age. So, you know, someone who's in their 30s, it's perhaps you give a bit more leeway. Uh, but I mean, I think honestly, anything. Uh, I, okay, as far as the statistics show, I think it's anything over six is like really bad for long-term commitment. I agree completely. Um, the, if you do, you do you have sources for what you're saying? Like, is it a statistics? Yeah, they've done. They've done. Do you have sources for what you're saying? What Good what point. am I saying? You're saying that it doesn't matter. What what it doesn't yeah, matter? It's the body counts. I love the point you made, I though, said, because I mean, you kind no, of... No, he's saying something very precise. Sorry. No, no. Something very specific. Mm -hmm. um, uh, a person that has gone with more than six people uh, has what very low chance to get a long relationship. I, that's not exactly what I said. Your soul the, ties with people. Marital creates, satisfaction. like soul ties with people when you have mm -hmm. sex with them, like emotional, mm. hormonal connections with people. She's the more right. people you have sex with, the less and less yep. like but where your are body the studies is like. That testify that. They've, I believe it. There's <laughs> been, they have done studies on this. I mean, and the, they've also uh, who, asked who? people, they've the asked others. people who are divorced, for example, this quite what's that who is the scholar that conducted those studies yeah I don't well we can pull up the info maybe i'm just an odd maybe the there's just like a bunch of people that don't well i'll tell you i'll tell you one of the one of the most popular sorry no sorry. i agree, I agree. Yeah. david bass steven pinker sure what is um, it um those are um evolutionary psychologists that are often mentioned by the i don't know pickup artists red, red <laughs> pickup <laughs> artists let's say pickup artists it's actually the other guys the red it, pill. yeah it's the red yeah. pill we're not well, pickup actually, we're not pickup artists what, what they say is that uh promiscuity because that's what we are talking about changes uh and again these scholars when you actually read the scholars and you don't read i don't know Rollo Tomasi or and company, when you actually read the scholars, they are very careful at saying that our studies, my study, has limitations, and we are offering a, a, a model that explains the majority of the situation, but all, but not all of them. So they they show the macrocosm, but the single individuals may definitely behave in a different way. So for what concerns prom promiscuity, they said that women are actually they behave very differently during their life. So in a range of time between 18, 19, 20, until uh, 27, 
they are uh, 27 and 26. There, there is not a specific age, but basically they, ha they are more promiscuous. They tend to be more pro promiscuous on a general term. After the age, they change uh, sometimes even drastically their behavior. So what I, what I mean is that if a girl is 26 years old and she has been for with 30 guys, oh. There is the yeah. possibility, <laughs> and it's actually the studies. These are scientific studies. What, I'm, what I'm, does I'm the study say? It. What does it they, say? They say that basically there is an, uh, a range of age be, uh, around 30 years old where women have a lower libido, so n less desire to have sex, and they want to settle and have longer relationships. So also their body count that is like doesn't raise as before. So in level of promiscuity is not stable like men because the, the desire for men is stable and also the body counts tend to get up. That, I mean, what you just said does nothing to disprove the fact right. that people who have, the, the more premarital sexual partners you have, the greater likelihood of infidelity, no. the, hold on, the greater likelihood of infidelity, the greater likelihood of divorce, the greater likelihood of reporting but relationship dissatisfaction. Can you stop interrupting? The greater likelihood of reporting di relationship dissatisfaction and the greater likelihood of STD. Yeah, but that's the same for, so what I'm saying is that th that is okay, that's the same for men though. It's, so it's, it's a different problem. actually. Uh, how is it different? It's the, it, it, the, Men's pair bonding can be impacted, and these, it, it, it is also the case for men, but I believe what the studies show is that this impact of having more premarital sexual partners is actually more pronounced in women. Yeah. No, no. Yes. Uh, no, because men wants to, uh, I mean, sorry, but what, what studies did you, did you read? They, so I'm here, telling listen, you. Just listen, listen. There's okay. multiple studies Eric, can you start by multiple people infographics folder? stating yeah. that like, the more sexual partners a woman has, she has higher instances of anxiety, higher instances of depression, higher instances of relationship uh, unsatisfaction, as well as marriage and divorce as well. And it's common sense. Like, like I don't know why everybody's trying to pretend like being a hoe is okay. Like, the, the average guy doesn't sit down and be like, yeah, I really want a girl. You know? Who's been ran through? <laughs> oh, You're, there's a CDC study. It's called Sex Partner CDC, and then the preceding. There's four, um, it's alphabetical order, so there's four other ones after that. Actually, sorry, there's five other ones after that. It's a divorce, less stable marriage, marriage satisf satisfaction, promiscuity, and STI. Um, so you can pull all those up. Um, Laura, uh, what you were saying about how women's oh, promiscuity uh, is different over time as they age. Uh, sorry, repeat. Is this unfair? Sorry, I feel again? like the uh, mute, a microphone wait, thing is unfair. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, well, okay, go on. It's no what you were saying about how women's levels of promiscuity change as they age, that's, like going through their 20s and then shown their 30s. That. I, don't, I don't say that it's for all I days. mean, if that's, if that's the sorry, case. I'm sorry, bro, she stole the bike. If that's the case, um, <laughs> uh, yeah. if anything, I would see that as an argument, um, if true, for women in their 20s being in a monogamous relationship marriage uh, when their sex drive is at the highest and their fertility is at the highest. That's not what the studies show. They they actually show when, that they have they're pretty horny. No, no, you're actually wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the li women's we'll libido up. goes well, I up. Bus. I can give you even the no, pH. No, no, women's libido typically goes up as you get older because their t estrogen goes down, their testosterone goes up. Yep. Um, here, let's do this. Let's do this. We're gonna <laughs> no, pull no, up. No, I'm talking about women, not I'm men. I'm sorry, bad ZXC. She stole the mic. Too. I can't do anything. I, I can't. It was do like anything. Like <laughs> highest in your 20s, then there's no, a dip, and then it goes higher. No more mute a microphone, please, guys. No more mute a microphone. Yeah. As the women, yeah, as happens they get older. to some women that they get menopause and then they get like right salt. before no, menopause, then they can't even deal with in their like in their 60s. I feel like it's not fair, you know. Um, here, let's pull up the studies. Um, Eric, can you pull them up, please? All right, so this is from the CDC. Uh, and Eric, can you zoom in so we can see the top ones? So women who have more non-marital sexual, more non of uh, non-marital sexual partners are more likely to be infected with sexually transmitted diseases. As you see, the lower your pre uh, non-marital sexual partner count, uh, it increases the more 21 plus. It's up there 41 percent. Or scroll up a bit, Eric. That's if you don't have safe sex, though, because you can easily wear a condom. Yeah. <laughs> condoms, <laughs> condoms don't prevent you from That's true. getting STDs That's true, necessarily. Uh, I mean, the, the next one says women who have more non-marital sexual partners are less likely to have stable marriages. So uh, let's see. And the, the source is the CDC. Um, 
Scroll down. Women who have more non-marital sexual partners are less likely to be yeah, happy. You can say that. I would never. You can say that then. Women who have more non-marital sexual what? partners are more likely to be depressed. That's one. Go to the next one, Eric. Oh my God. Uh, chance of divorce after five years of marriage. Um, and the first one is zero partner. And then it peaks, goes up to, it's interesting how it kind of dips. Uh, so this particular data set might not be the most reliable and they don't cite anything, but um, there's, uh, well, just because it's an odd, there's an odd dip there or a peak at two and then a dip and then back 10 plus it peaks and 1980s, 1990s, and then yellows, 2000s. I'd be curious to see this. I think probably the end count on this one is pr pretty low, but let's see the next one. Oh, th I think this is from the... Uh, uh, Institute for Family Studies. And so the... Uh, oh, this is from the GSS and the, from 1986 to 2016. Um, and the total end count is, it looks like about 12,000 people they surveyed, um, which is yeah, it's pretty good. And I, the microphone's muted, just saying. I'm just saying, it's still muted, hello? Um, wait. Um, okay, so... She, look, she grabbed the other microphone. I'm sorry, guys. Um, okay. <laughs> so sexual history, marital satisfaction. Uh, the more partners you have, lower your marital satisfaction. Um, holy shit, they're really spamming refund. My bad. Her microphone's still muted, I think. So we're good? We're good? You know? Bad ZXE. DM me after the show if you want a refund. Okay. Uh, next one. Uh, female promiscuity over time, partner count, uh, and then this just shows, scroll down. I don't know the source on this, but why does this matter? Marriage stability, happiness, and STDs. Scroll down, what are the sources all the way at the bottom? Familystudies.org. Okay, I mean, we don't have those PDFs on hand, but it's an infographic, whether you want to believe it or not. I mean, you don't have to. Uh, you, I think you're still muted. Yeah. So... Uh, does it, hold on, no, we'll, we'll let you come in, but let's, you're muted, so we're gonna get, we'll have, uh, do you, did you have something you wanted to say on this, pair bonding? So I just, I agree with your topic because I do feel like I've experienced it, but I'm really okay with the experiences I've had. I love sex and I can just enjoy sex as is because I'm not looking for a partner, but for someone who might be looking for a partner and they're continually having experiences with different people that they might meet um it is going to be harder for you to bond with them over time because maybe you don't trust them because you're like how many people have you slept with or you know i haven't slept with that many but you know what i mean your pairing is just very different mm -hmm. it's very hormonal mm -hmm. and men or women are very different so i feel sure. like this is a real thing and soul bonding soul ties you know if you're really trying to get connected to somebody trying to have a relationship with somebody having sex with multiple partners is definitely going to affect that like I said, I feel it. I connect very differently with people because maybe not because of the amount of people I've slept with, but because of how I view men. Mm 